The Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Ooh. Off-season continues. He is Cedric Maxwell. I am Joe Sway Pavone. We still got weeks before training camp, but Max, there's still plenty to talk about, right? Celtics fans are excited for this upcoming season. These workout videos keep getting better and better. And this one, I'd have to say, takes the cake, which is uh, not a video per se, but a picture of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in the lab together. Max, can you believe it? Never have I ever seen this during the offseason. I've seen it during the season, but during the offseason, these two together working out. I mean, how significant is that? For you, you know, I don't, I don't know, and I was, I keep thinking back to a couple of things that I, I've heard people, players say, and said, uh, you know, they don't make each other better. Uh, mm. You know, they're, they're duplicate players. They're both great scorers. Uh, so yeah, they do have to find out a way to uh, get better. The thing that made me laugh was, and, and I don't know how it worked out, was uh, that, that Jalen Brown. Um, did he suit up for the big three? That's the plan. Yeah. For the championship or the all-star game rather. Yeah. That would surprise me too. I'm glad you brought that up, Max. Yeah. Well, I ain't talking about ice cubes pumped. I'm, I'm talking about from a legal standpoint. How does that mm. work out? Were you allowed to do that as a player? And how would that affect your contract if you got hurt? Right. I mean, but I guess I guess if you're playing in anything, you're playing in anything. I guess it. It doesn't matter, but it, it's yeah. just a little odd to me. And I saw where um, they were talking about him and uh, the first active NBA player to actually come to the three uh, big three. And, and it's huge for the big three. It gives them credibility. But I just thought it was a little weird for him to have his first year to do this and then have Porzingis essentially say, well, I have plantar fasciitis. And you know what? I ain't messing with this right now with my country. I'm going right. to not play at all, get healthy so I can come into the season. So just a, just a little hmm, made, me, made me think for a minute. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, but then I thought about someone like Peyton Pritchard when he does these pro-am, right? I mean, the, there yeah. isn't a whole lot of blowback yeah. from that. So I, I guess it's essentially the same thing. You you would picture as being like a 10, maybe 15 minute run. I'm sure it's not going to be that long, but it was really surprising to see that. I, I know it's a part of his uh, – his uh, charities, raising money. So, uh, you know, it's not just him going out and falling out. I thought it was actually, excuse me, I thought it was actually just to suit up. I wouldn't think that he'd be actually playing. Yeah. Uh, because, my God, I'd be so, uh, you know, if you were guarding him, I'd be so careful, man. I can't, I can't injure this guy. Some crazy right. freakish happens. But you know, I guess I guess it's a good thing. I mean, you know, things are so interchangeable right now. And, right. And, and things fit so well together. I mean, did I ever think that, you know, Scottie Pippen's ex-wife would be trying, you know, <laughs> marrying Michael Jordan's son? <laughs> and it's wait, big down here. People down wait, here hold on, like, Max. You mean to tell me you, you're surprised that Jordan and Pippen, they, they got a seventh ring, but not in the way that we thought it was going to wow, happen? Wow. Wow. <laughs> that was really cool. Like, you worked on that all week. I, I like that. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking at it going, huh. That's really, really kind of strange, though, you know, considering that uh, well, Michael really is put out there like he is not feeling this at all for his son. Right. And uh, right. Well, I know people are, are, are going to do what they're going to do. Um, but maybe father knows best here. I mean, <laughs> maybe this woman, this woman's done some. She hadn't been the most, you know, outstanding model of a woman considering <laughs> some of the guys and some of the things she's done well, uh, since she met Scottie Pippen. She has really done this, but on top of that, look at Dennis Rodman. Uh, yella, yella. I think this is the girl he's going out with now. Uh, she's a Instagram model, and uh, she's 23, and he's 60, and he had her, ta- he had her picture tattooed on the side of his face. Yeah, this is news to me, Max. I got to be honest. I, I don't know that about this. Yeah, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this is true. This, this, this is it. God damn. He's, he's with a girl. Her name is not Yellow. 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 You know, you see them yellow gals out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow, yellow. yellow, I, yellow. And, I like and he's, he's with her. And uh, I'm thinking is what? 
What happens if you break up? I mean, well, <laughs> if you break up with <laughs> what are you going to do with a tattoo? I swear those tats never go well, man. Like no. it's never always in forever. Like, why do they, why do people do these things? Well, do, you know, go with why don't you just go with mom? Love your mom, <laughs> or something like that. But that, that's <laughs> it, you know, or, quick, or you can put your kids up there or whatever, but right. you know, putting the wife and all this other stuff up there. It's a it gets a little strange. But but getting back to where we were, because <laughs> it, it's been like that crazy NBA time where there's so much information coming at you about the NBA. Michael Jordan, I saw one of his uh, partners down here in Charlotte, and uh, we talked for a minute, and I was asking him about that, you know, some of the stuff. He's like, well, you know, Michael decided he was going to sell, but he's just so, you know, majority ownership, and and he still has a lot to do with this team down here. So a lot of crazy things right now are happening. Uh, the whole D Wade speech, which everybody talked about, his Hall of Fame speech was so great. I yeah, mean, it's man. just it, it's just a it, it's it's an interesting time right now for the NBA, considering it's this off season. What's it been like down there? Like, what are people saying about it? You know, about the whole Jordan Pippen situation. Uh, like, what's been the overall response? Obviously, it's much. I'm sure it's similar to what we're seeing up here. Everyone's kind of shocked, but like, yeah, they must be really disappointed down there. Like, man, we, need a, we need a reunion. We need a bull reunion. Ninety eight bull reunion. Be, be, be. <laughs> That's what that we would need. Really, that would top the cake, but that was. It's that been twenty five years. Thing. That's perfect. But, but see, years. that's the that's the thing. The beauty of it that was so cool when we did the we had the little portion. When I did the thing with Isaiah, and we talked about different things. And yeah. um, and I think it was um, I'm going to say it was actually at that time about might have been uh, Ricky Mahorn, and he mm-hmm. said the three teams that need to have a, I guess, a reunion would be the Celtics, the Lakers, and the Pistons. He said the Pistons had one. He said the mm-hmm. Lakers, eh, not so much. And he, then he went on and he said the Bulls definitely should have one. But he said they're two best players right now. Don't get along. And then he made a point of saying, well, why don't the Celtics have one? And then he chimed in and said, well, maybe because their best player, Larry Bird, doesn't want to talk to any of them. And I was like, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's true. Uh, you know, I would hope that Larry, you know, feels a certain way about us, uh, you know, that, you know, you win multiple championships with a guy. It's, it's hard to dislike him or dislike the people that you play with or against. Right. Well, I just feel like Larry is the kind of guy who just keeps to himself. Right. Maybe people take that personally or maybe that's just I don't see him as the kind of guy to be like, man, we have to do this. You know, he's just not that kind of guy. But you don't. You don't take that as like he doesn't like his former teammates, or would you? I don't know. What do you think, man? Yeah, I don't. I don't know because you know. I guess I've been together with a bunch of those guys, and um, we all are clamoring. I think to get together to have something. Uh, everybody, pretty mm-hmm. much, I talk to Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale and uh, ML Carr and Nate Archibald and uh, Gerald Henderson. A lot of people are clamoring to just get together. And the one time that we did get together, and that was at the autograph signing, uh, I think you were there just away with your camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate, Nate was there. Um, um, and, was and you could tell that the the relationship and the camaraderie with the guys that were together, it, it was it was just really cool. It was really, really mm-hmm. cool. Good stuff to see. Well, what were your off seasons like, Max? Like, when, when did you start getting back into the gym. Like, what was it like back then compared to now? Because uh, again, this Tatum and Brown uh, photo is significant in my opinion, because we have, we've never seen it before. You know, these two, these, these two hanging out during the off season when they don't necessarily have to. And then the, the other thing, the other uh, video that surfaced on Jason Tatum's social media was him kicking in with Paul Pierce in the gym and them going at it, you know, in terms of just, just lifting and, and talking. I love to see that, you know, but but mm-hmm. back to my question, though, like, how, how did that go for you guys? Like, what were your off seasons mostly like compared to what, what we see now? Nothing. Our, ours is nothing like that because we because when I got in the league initially, the first thing they told you, uh, told you, Mezzarucki said, once you finish the season, they said, young, young buck, take two months off. Don't even mm-hmm. go near a basketball. Whereas we see now. Guys like LeBron, guys who want to have longevity, you never stop. It becomes a year-round process. 
So uh, I, 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 I like to see this. I, I like the fact that Paul Pierce is kind of uh, uh, I never saw a commercial with him and Tatum. I, I did like that. Um, so the stuff about this that, you know, we have those older veterans come around and that's like, that's what is so pretty and so significant to me about Celtic family. When you bring the KGs back, when you bring, uh, you know, uh, Garnett comes back, we have Ray Allen, we have Paul, we have myself, we have all these people around. It just makes it that much more special of a family unit uh, when you think about guys who be in that situation. 100 percent that's exactly what i was going to get into man this uh Celtics fraternity thing is real and i, I feel like tatum and, and and brown they're they're hip to it in the sense of like obviously they they know they saw what pierce and garnett and those guys did and they know obviously all the banners that hang above them but to have those one-on-one conversations i think will go a long way and it doesn't have to just be about x's and o's it's just a it's the conversation really, about what it was like these guys never know. been to the mountaintop you know? I mean, I don't, they they do and they don't I think that they go in that era where they saw some of Paul Pierce playing. So they had an opportunity to connect like that. With me, it was just, it was so funny when I told you how many times I've told this story, how, you know, um, they had just done the whole thing with the Lakers Celtic series. Uh, you know, and uh, we're talking about it. And Jason Tatum comes out and he starts screaming out, cornbread, cornbread. And I really knew him, but I didn't like know him. And he yeah. finally looks over me and I said, Boy, what's wrong with you? He said, Man, I saw that, I saw that 30 for 30. I saw it two times. Damn, you a bad motherfucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's what I mean, man. Like he's a historian, man. He likes this stuff. He he yeah, he I mean, uh, it, it really, old soul. It, it really is cool. Here's the thing I do like about him when I've heard him say is he he went on to say, if I play in Charlotte one time a year, I yeah. owe it to my I owe it to the fans who were yeah. sitting there. And that to me, that's I I love that. I love that about him. Yeah. I didn't feel that way myself. And that is the one thing that I hated. I can't say I hate it, but that's the one thing you know, when you play with a, a guy like Larry Bird, you always put you you're always put, I guess. In a, in a bubble because Larry played hard against everybody. It was never a night that he took off. I mean, if it was 20 people out there who had one leg, then he was just going, he, he was going at them like they had two legs. He, he didn't care. He, it, that was his love. And for most of us players, you there there were nights nice when psychologically I, I, I'm sorry to say this but there were nights nice when you took off your mind wasn't as sharp you know I know I was I, I felt like I was built for the playoffs I felt like I was built for every big game that I played in uh, I was going to play in I played in 80, 80 games one year and eighty one one year but my mental level um, uh, uh, preparation wasn't as great when you're playing alongside of a Larry Bird, because his mental preparation was maybe the best that I've seen when it comes to that killer instinct of playing against guys every single night. And that was one thing that hates a, a wrong word to you. I guess envious. I was envious mm-hmm. of the fact that he was able to bring him up, bring himself up to that level every every night. Every Hell, night. I played with Robert Parrish. Robert Parrish wasn't like that to bring himself up every single night. Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson. I'm talking about Nate Archer. I'm talking about Hall of Famers that I played mm-hmm. with during that era. Nobody was able to get their game up to the level of Larry Bird in a 82-game schedule. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I feel like you can't really teach that, right? You either have it or you, or, or you don't. But I feel like seeing Pierce with Tatum during the offseason, I, I want to see if that brings more of the uh, Celtics pride out of Tatum, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just want – and this is something I talked about on the Celtics postgame show like well, a couple of years ago when I was like, you know, 
So they hadn't made the finals. They were starting to figure this thing out. We we're trying to wonder if Tatum and Brock could work together. And I'm like, no, man, I just want to see Tatum just show more of that Celtics pride. Do one of these every once in a while. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the, the first time Garnett did that and how everyone lost it. You know what I mean? Like this is you a, know, then, a then you feel, pride then you feel thing. that then you feel that this this year. You remember when he had that, that big game? Who was it against? Was it Philly? Was he had all had that that huge fifty point game or whatever? And really? he was game six. He was, yeah. he was knocking down shots, and he was like, "Oh my god!" That that excitement. Well, no, he, he he couldn't he couldn't find a, he couldn't find the basket until the fourth quarter. That's what it was, yeah. and then he yeah. and he went off. Yeah, yeah, but right. yeah, I, and and that to me is uh, that's when I think he's going to change gears because. His teammates, they his teammates and the fans, mm. they get hyped up when he's hyped up. Players right. and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and getting back to where I was with the conversation of playing hard, you think even the, the great Kobe Bryant didn't play like that every single night. You think about mm. the time that Kobe Bryant went in a game and refused to shoot. And he kept passing. He kept passing the passing. So well, he was trying to prove a point that night, but yeah, he did do that. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> to prove that point, he did. But at the same time, mm-hmm. that's what I'm talking about the 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 level of, of of concentration or commitment. I've only seen that basically out of one player, I think, that I can think of during my time. Garnett might have been like that though. Garnett did okay, not. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Barnett seemed like there wasn't a night off that he he took, but those were the two examples that I can think of. And going, hmm. but mm-hmm. that that's that's the greatness of some players like that. What do you think compelled Jalen to do this? Is it the contract? Is it like you know what uh, we got to figure this thing out one way or another? Man, it's not that, the contract, that, that con- dude. That contract is coming. Come hell of high water. I, I you know, if he's not, I, know, I mean, if he, we know if what he's like this. If he's that, not injured, that contract is coming. He is going to be. He's going to be the highest. <laughs> no man. Player. Right. No, I understand that. But Mac, my point is like, the, it's a contract for uh, enough for him to say, you know what? Okay, let's let me get in the gym with Tatum. Let me do my my absolute one thousand percent best because this this organization has 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 you know finally shown me completely that they're committed to me and that they you know they the the contract is for what he's done and what he's going to do in the future. You know what I mean? I feel like. There's that sense of uh, that, that sense of security that man, his organization really appreciates me. Let me call up Tatum real quick and get in the gym with him. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Is it something like that? Cool. To me, I think it's so cool. I think it's really cool when I think I about love it. Who they are and what they're doing. I really think that is so cool. But it's I don't think that that is bringing him back to the gym because I want to prove. I think he does want to prove he's worth the contract. Because of so many naysayers talking about, oh, he didn't deserve this and that. Eight that, turnovers that. in Game Seven. So yeah. many people saying that about him. So I think he just wants to come back and bang it out. And I'd look for him to have a, a sensational year. And his year was he had a sensational year. He just his, he gets better every year, man. His only flaws that you look at is the fact that he cannot turn the ball over as much as he had in these situations where he's going into a crowd of people. Tatum does one thing where he he cuffs that 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 basketball almost like he's carrying a, a football running through a line. Tatum Brown puts the ball out a little bit too much where you're able to knock it away or it gets a little squirrely with the dribbles. But but I don't think anything to do with uh, him coming to um, uh, terms of like, hey, I got to get in the gym and I I, I got to do this this year to prove you know to, uh, you know, this is going to be what I'm doing this for Tatum and doing it for, I think he's doing it for himself. You know, Max, it's, uh, it's, it's season two of uh, uh, the, the, the Showtime, the Showtime Lakers show on, on, on HBO. And, and guess what, guess what season they're in right now, Max? 1980, 1981 season. Remember that year? <laughs> you remember that? Put in work, baby. Put in work. <laughs> Put in that work. Watch, it. Watch out, put this. Put it in work, Draymond. That's what I do. <laughs> you tell him to go watch that, right? Watch that. Watch that show. Well, you get not only did you get a couple of highlights in there, but man, it's it's interesting to me because uh Coop's all over it. Michael Cooper, Lakers legend Mike Cooper. And so you're saying they put in 80, 84, not 81. What do you mean? 
You just said they put in 1981. You're saying they put oh, in no, the season. The season starts in 81, but like okay. two, three episodes in, they're already a couple of years later. Like it's, it's oh, kind of, okay. So they're, yeah, yeah. they're it goes, up to four. Yeah, during that. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, this that, is like episode, I think this week's episode four, but the first two episodes were like, you know, 80, 81. But I thought it was interesting because he was, he's was he been in the news lately for what he said on, on his podcast with, uh, with, with Nick Gelso, uh, Showtime with Cooper. And this is what he said. The Boston Celtics take three steps back. How do you do that? You lose Grant Williams, you mess a f around and, and and lose Marcus Smart, your heart and soul of your team, and then he just trashes Porzingis. Who the hell is he? I uh, uh, quote: "The only thing, the one thing I'll say about him is he looks like a Celtic. The guy, uh, that guy there, was a flop in Dallas, was a flop in Washington. He's an international player. He was brought over here to be a marquee player." And man, to, to me, for, for him to go out and say this, man, I'm like, you you want this team to fail so badly that you, you, you're trying to convince yourself, you know, after what he said about Tatum and Brown and, and you know, now it's Porzingis isn't enough. It's, it's just funny to me, man. Well, and then I'm watching that, this TV show I, I think, and there I think he is. That, well, and, and, and as you know, doing a, doing a podcast, you have to be make statements like that. And, and sometimes if, if, if you throw enough, I'll do like this with Michael Cooper. If you throw enough shit against the wall, eventually something's going to stick. And, you know, Porzingis is an easy target. Because, he's trying to get ahead of this. Uh, he's trying to get ahead of this. Because of the year that he had with Dallas, the year that of uh, that not working, coming to Washington. But Washington wasn't the complete flop point, considering mm. the fact that he had one of his best seasons last year. And that's what made Brad want to pull the trigger when it came down to it, now you you putting that on the floor at any time. If Porzingis is out there and he's playing alongside Al, you now have five legitimate three point threats at any time on that floor. So, so I, I'm I'm interested. I, I I appreciate what he said. I respect what he said and the fact that he wants to trash the guy. But this is one of the times where I said, like me given an opportunity to breathe. I'm the, I'm the biggest Marcus Smart fan out here. But give it an opportunity to breathe and see what else see what mm-hmm. else happens. Definitely. Yeah. I can't wait for this upcoming season, man. Easily the most the highly most highly anticipated Celtic season in a while, if you ask me. Just considering the changes in, you know, the uh the, the back-to-back trips to the Eastern Conference Finals, 2022, make it to the NBA finals and everything that came after that, you know. But uh lastly I want to get you out on this, Max. Uh I don't know if you sent a text message or something, or maybe someone watched this show, but uh, the Southern's, they had a workout with TJ Warren this week. And uh, he's, he, he's vying for that one of those last roster spots as the Celtics look to, um, you know, put put the roster together heading into training camp. Glenn Robinson the third is another player that they worked out. Um, there's, what, what's your reaction to that, man, TJ Warren especially? Go look that. at – this is what you do. Go look at the video of TJ Warren playing against Jimmy Butler. And you Ooh. see what you get right there. You get one of those dogs. <laughs> you get a guy hey, that doesn't like that a, him at all. And, that was a good matchup. You know, yeah. That was one of the – I think that's when he was with Indiana. And they both went back and forth till I think T.J. Warren got thrown out the game. But I think you pick those players. And strategically, well, they, you think about – that in the, in the, in the, in the ball. I don't care where it was. I don't care if we're walking down the damn street. I don't care. You know. No, I don't mean guys. that as a bad way. <laughs> yeah, I mean those two guys. I'm just going, saying. I, I want to see. I don't care. It's just fine. I just want. I want to see. You know. You know what I love when we get when you get one guy that doesn't like another guy. That to me, mm-hmm. that is some cool stuff, and that makes that makes great theater for me. And and for me, it puts a guy like Jimmy Butler on record. You know, Jimmy Butler did a did a number on you these last couple of years, but you didn't retaliate enough to me going at him. And uh, I did see T.J. T. Warren go right at him. So I'm happy to see. Yeah, he's fearless, stuff. man. I, I, I work him out. He's a he's a good wing guy. Uh, he's a, he's a pretty good shooter. He can score the basketball. Uh, what I like about is his physicality, and I like his toughness. I like his grit, and I love his emotion. And not lack of, not to say of, but but you know, you know me, I always want if I could do one thing in life right now for the Celtics, I would sprinkle some of that dust on Brown and Tatum 
that mean to us. I, I, you know, Tupac had the thing about, you know, I, 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 you know, he got two dogs beside his bed and I feed him lead. That was in his, it when his, his, uh, raps. Oh but yeah. That's that, right. was, yeah. That, was, that was it. That was to make a me. That was just to make a me. And, and excuse me, animal lovers. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this is what he said, but I just want a little meanness in both those guys. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. When I talk about that Paul Pierce, Celtics pride thing, I want some of that meanness, that grit. Man, I- Iman, it just came into my mind right now. Iman Shumper was on a podcast recently. He, he told a story about when they went out in New York and Pierce comes in and he's looking at Garden. I mean, he's looking at Mello and he's just like, yo, who is this guy guarding me? Who is who is this? You got, yo, let me know when you want to play, man. Let me know. He scores on them twice. And Iman says, man, I'm trying my hardest to stop this guy. He's like, what do you mean? I'm right here in front of you, man. Like, I want him to have some a little bit of that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm in here. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here because I, I got a mission now. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I've been to the finals, but I'm trying to do it all right now. And this is it. anyone in my way. Yeah. I, I'm not happy. You know, I want that type of attitude. Yeah, the word I will use, moxie. You know, you want a little moxie with your players. And that's, the only, and that's the only thing that has been missed. You think of, of, of the last couple of seasons for the Celtics. What was the most moxie thing you think about? And that was probably Al when he dunked, dunked on, um, on Giannis. Giannis. Yeah, and, yeah. El- and they elbowed him all up in the mouth and then screamed and yelled. And Al tried to play it off, but we knew Al meant to do that on purpose. And that was that. That's what I. That's what I want to see. That that kind of stuff yeah. pushes the Celtics over the edge. Celtics haven't really had that, and they don't have enough of it for me. Uh, and that's what Marcus brought to the table that you yeah. lose. So you got it in translation. You have to have somebody else to pick that up. And it's got to be these guys, man. How how great yeah. would that be if it, if it's your your two best players, right? Mm-hmm. Jalen Brown, right before he signs that contract, telling a. A room full of people. Like it's about the defense, and, and I gotta be, you know, I gotta be that guy. I love that mm-hmm. man. I, I think that's gonna what really carries this team a long way and fills that void that's gonna be missing without having someone like Marcus Smart. You know, that dog, mm-hmm. like you, like you say, not having that dog in the lineup. I totally agree, yeah. and we'll get a chance to see it because the season's coming up. I just look at some of these games, these exhibition games, and you know, on is it the eighth, eighth of uh, October, eighth October, October, yep. Uh, yep. Their first exhibition game, and then you go down to New York and you play Philly, and you got a couple. You end up with Charlotte in their first game of the season. That's going to be a good one. That game is in New York City. First game yep. of the season. You play. Porzingis is back. That's you know good. that. You know, man. You know that is going to be a. That's going to be a fire sale up in there for that particular oh, game. So talking all kinds of. Shit. Yes. Yes. Talking. Yes. I can't wait. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Uh, we got special guests lined up, man. We got plenty of uh, plenty of fun things planned between now and, and training camp and the start of the season, so I can't wait. I'm not going to say much right now, though. I don't want to get ahead of it, Max. I feel like sometimes that delays the surprises when we when we start teasing people about what we got going on. So we'll just we'll just let the surprise you know, okay. do, do its thing, well, and when you, least, when you least expect it, you'll see these guests pop up, lined up, right? Thank you, sir. All right. We'll see you guys next week. He is Cedric Maxwell. I am Joseph Pavone. This has been the Cedric Maxwell podcast sponsored by good friends over at FanDuel. Head over to FanDuel.com slash Boston. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel Sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and start earning bonus bets when you bet on a Super Bowl winner. You can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. 